<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, so I've got a lot of new updates to cover, so I'm going to dive in directly in our updates. And uh, before doing that, actually, I want to briefly mention um, our training and validation framework, the one that we use at ONT. Um, so maybe a little bit counterintuitively, uh, we generally start when we're interested in a new base, we start by making our base calling models insensitive to modifications. So we want the base color to call the base correctly, whether it's modified or not. So we do actually spend a bit of time uh, boosting our training data with modification. On the other end, uh, the, the modification training side, we use this uh, architecture, this, this oligo uh, for modification training, which have a randomer with a modified base in the middle. And um, it's slightly different for DNA and RNA, but in the end, we extract the slice of signal, which is around the modification. And then we use that with Remora to train a model. So as a user, you don't necessarily see it, but under the hood, uh, Dorado will call, will call both the base color model as well as the Remora model. And what you see in the end is just a ModBAM uh, file which contains your base calls as well as your modification probabilities. For the validations of, uh, of those models, we also use synthetic data. Uh, in particular, so we use these oligonucleotides with fully defined sequence with modifications at known, pos at known position. Sorry. Um, we use phosphoramidate chemistry for that because it leads to the most robust possible ground truth you can have to validate your models. And as you can see on the, on the right hand side, we've got the total number of uh, sites we use for validation of different models. You can see that for the modifications we've been working on for a long time, we do actually have quite a lot of validation sites for the ones that we've started a bit uh, later. We are progressively increasing this number. And that's particularly true for RNA that we've only been working, uh, starting to work on a year ago or so. I just want to show you quickly what our validation uh, strand look like when you plot them into IGV. So you've got three different versions. You've got the canonical control at the top, then the 5MC control and the 5HMC at the bottom. So if you load them in IGV and use directly this base modification uh, coloring scheme, that's what you'll see with our, our modification uh, strand. So 5MC in red and 5HMC in green. You can see that from that you've got a ground truth at single base single read resolution, which we can then use to calculate all sorts of metrics, including accuracy. So now that you've got a bit of um, an idea of how we do it, uh, I'm just going to show you an update on our DNA modification um, um, framework. And in particular, what I want to show you is this constant improvement on the accuracy of model over the years. Uh, Remora has been released around like a little bit over two years ago. And you can see that we've actually managed to squeeze more accuracy for different modifications all this time. And that's particularly true uh, this year, again, for, uh, for this London calling. You can see that in particular, we've got a big boost in accuracy for 5MC in all contexts, which is now over 99% accuracy, as well as uh, our 4MC, 5MC model, which uh, was previously a rare year model, but is now at a level that we feel confident release it in, in Dorado. So it's available in Dorado from, from today. So now that we've done these four modifications, these core modifications, we can start looking up further, really. So that's what we've done with starting to investigate uh, other modifications, and in this case, like more damage bases. One that we've been working on is deoxyuracil. We've got a bit of experience on this one, so we decided to, to give it a go. Uh, it has some relevance in particular in some metabolic diseases as well as cancer. And we train a model, like a pretty basic model compared with the model we use for uh, the other modifications. And you can see that we were actually really pleased to, to see that we could reach 96% accuracy from the, first, from the first time. Now, if you look on the right panel, you can see that we've got two oligos that are used for validation, so used to calculate this 96%. The left, the, the right side, sorry, oligo 2, you can see that the probability bleeds a little bit to adjacent position, which is generally the case in research model. Uh, and then we've got more advanced routine for training, and we can refine this probability, and it ends up like what you've seen for 5MC, 5HMC before. So at this stage, we're not releasing the model, but we feel confident that this will be completely possible with uh, DU as well. There are a few DNA adducts we're working on, so ATOXOG is in the pipeline, as well as ribobases uh, in DNA as well. So we've got data on that, just need to find the time to train them now. 
Uh, right, onto RNA modifications now. We've spent a considerable, uh, considerable amount of time updating our RNA model. So you've heard from Susie that we've, we've actually updated our M6A model from DRAC only to all contexts. So in the process, we've, we've actually also managed to improve the DRAC accuracy, which is now the DRAC only accuracy. So DRAC, just to remind you, is DRACH, is the consensus motif for, uh, for, for mammalians. Um, and we know of a 99% in this specific model, so that's, uh, that's great. And you can see that the, the random context accuracy, so the old context validation, is actually, is actually not, far, not far behind. So we're really pleased actually to release this model to the community. You can see that we've done this comparison with GLORY. GLORY is the sort of equivalent to bisulfite sequencing for M6A, so single base resolution as well. And we're extremely pleased to see that we've got a very good correlation between the two methods. Um, and we've also checked on ribosomal RNA, which has like M6A in different contexts, and you can see that the, the, the modification probability pile up nicely on the known annotated M6A site in ribosomal RNA. So another really good surprise for us. But the model I'm probably the most excited about is the Suderidin model. Um, so this is the most abundant modification in, in RNAs, and it's a due mainly to the fact that it's highly enriched in RNAs and tRNAs, which are very abundant RNAs. We've also managed to train an all-context model with the same methods, and as you can see, the model is actually slightly better than the M6A model. Now, because it's rich in RNA, we just gave it a go and see whether we could actually see the, the probabilities lining up in all these Sudurid insights. And you can see on the panel on the right side that it does actually line up really well with annotated Sudurid insights. Not all of them, because it's not always modified or not always at like 100% stoichiometry. But we're really pleased to see this, this really nice alignment. And RNA is like notoriously been hard to sequence. But now we are at the stage we can actually generate those beautiful uh, um, plots. Finally, another, in, another modification we, we are still working on, so it's not ready for release yet, is inosine. Uh, inosine is a uh, wobble base in the, um, the tRNA anticodon and some tRNAs, and it has a role in editing as well, A2I editing. I'm sure you're familiar with that. So we, don't, we haven't fully validated, as I mentioned before, but what we've done is that we've, we've tested on brain versus liver samples. So brain is known to have a higher level of inosine uh, than, than, than liver. And then we just found really, really easily like few free transcripts that are showing elevated inosine editing uh, in brain as opposed to liver. Uh, but yeah, that's a model we're working on, and we're hoping that we will be in the position to release it uh, in the in the near future. Two other modifications, or two different types of modifications we're working on at the moment. So five, uh, M5C have been uh, asked a lot by many people in the community, so this one is definitely on the list, as well as two primomethyl. So with those modifications, we should actually we should cover like a large amount of the interest of the community. But it's not limited to that. We can probably do a lot more than that. Maybe not the 200 known modifications, but probably a good chunk of that. Right, so f finishing quickly on Mudkit. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. With Mudkit, but we've got a new release, the V0.3. This is our Swiss Army knife for modification uh, manipulation, really, modification data manipulation. I don't know if you if you know, but like we released like um, in the previous version of Mudkit, we released the um, the ability to do differential methylation analysis directly straight from your nanopore data, and uh, we've actually improved that a little bit as well as added another functionality, which is the possibility to de novo segment your methylome or your modification home because it works with any modification really. And you can see, for example, on this example, so the top track is the methylome segmentation obtained directly from Mudkit. Um, so you don't actually need to know anything on the, on the, the, the functional gen elements of your genome. You just run it and delegate that to Mudkit, and it will actually give you a bad file highlighting the part that are the same and the part that are different. The other new feature that we're releasing is this entropy command. So it will give you uh, the areas of your genome that are highly variable, modification-wise, versus the one that are more conserved. So that will give you a bed graph track that you can load into IGV as well, and will automatically show you so the dark parts are the, the areas of high variability versus the light ones, which are areas of like more conserved uh, modification. And finally, the last new command is this find motif command, which you can use to 
identify, discover de novo motifs in your mo modification motifs in your data. So this is particularly relevant for bacterial genomics. And it will give you um, a list of modifications, a list of modified mo uh, motifs. So that's an example over there in uh, H. pylori, pylori uh, over there. And you can actually see the motif that we've discovered at the top, as well as just like a quick uh, snapshot of an area where we actually can find all of these motifs. So all of these new, uh, new functionality, they're released with Dorado. Let me just remind you that we, uh, Dorado, with Mudkit, sorry. Uh, with Mudkit, you can also do hemimethylation analysis. So this is the, something that you can only do with Nanopore. It will give you the native modification state of two strands of a double-stranded DNA molecule, uh, which is really something you can't really use anything else to do. Right, I think that covers everything. Um, that's all for me. Thank you very much.